A good navigation system can make or break your project. I learned that the hard way after building navigation from scratch for multiple ArcBiz clients. So I created the third space navigation template. Two complete systems let me jump into new projects faster and spend my time on what actually makes the project unique. Here's what you're getting. Two fully fleshed out navigation systems that works out of the box for desktop and mobile, with third person and first person camera modes, plus a basic selection system so you can get your new project underway as fast as possible. You can grab this on Fab right now, links below. But I'm also releasing a free tutorial series starting next week if you want to build it yourself. So stay tuned for that. Let's start with basic navigation. This is what the tutorial series will focus on. It's perfect for single focus assets ranging in size from objects in a showroom to an entire building, making it ideal for simple ArcVis scenes and product configurators. This is the one that I use for all of my single building applications. Now the advanced navigation. This one took me a few weeks to perfect. I took inspo from the navigation system that most people are familiar with, Google Earth, and then reverse engineered its familiar feel through blueprints. Now this one's ideal for a larger scale project, like a neighborhood or city explorer, but it works for single focus objects as well if you want to give users that freedom of control while exploring your scene. Both systems include the same core features, so let's break that down. First you have your third person and first person camera modes. You get both perspectives built in with smooth camera transitions. Whether your users want to orbit around the building or simply explore it on foot, it's all there for you. Now, the biggest and most important thing for me was desktop and mobile support out of the box. The navigation system automatically detects if it's touchscreen and switches the controls. No extra setup needed. Now, I built this one specifically for pixel streaming scenarios where you don't necessarily know if the user is on desktop or mobile. Then we have our selection and hover system. Hover over any tag object and it highlights. Click it and the camera smoothly focuses and locks your orbit around that object. Setup simple, so let's jump into it. So jumping into the demo map that comes with the navigation template, you see this is the Villa Savoie by Le Corbusier. And press one on your keyboard, you have the documentation, as well as a link out to our full documentation page on, on docs.thirdspace interactive. And you can see here that there is a dedicated button for third space navigation, which takes you through an overview, what's included, and it breaks down each of the basic navigations and advanced navigation selection, all of that stuff. Now you can play around with the scene and explore the different navigation modes by changing the game modes, but I'm going to show you with an actual new project as this is something that you'll be going through yourself. All right, to add this navigation to your project, all you need to do is head over to your Epic Games Launcher once you've purchased the template and simply scroll down to your library, Fab Library, which is at the bottom. And then all you need to do is hit the Add to Project button. Once it's imported into your scene, all you need to do to actually get set up is go into your world settings. And if you don't see it here, you simply need to go to Window, World Settings down at the bottom and set your game mode override to one of the two navigations. In this case, we're gonna click basic since this is a pretty simple product oriented scene. Next, we need to set some collisions so that we can actually click on the floor to move and actually click on assets to be able to select them. So let's head over to our project settings, type in object and you'll see engine collision object channels. We're gonna create a new channel. I'm gonna call this one selectable mesh and call the second one floor plate. Then to actually set objects to this value, you simply need to click the objects that you want in the scene. So for the click to move, we'll want to click some floor elements. So these stone tiles. So I'm just going to select them all from my outliner, go into my details panel, type in collision, and we'll set the collision preset to custom and the object type to floor plate. Next, to actually select objects, we'll want to click some in the scene. So let's maybe click, I don't know, these two guys over here. And again, we'll go to collisions with them selected and set them to custom selectable mesh. Now, the last thing you need to do is make sure you have a player start in your scene. You can see I already have one, but Let's just delete one. Start starting completely from scratch. 
Head over to the plus icon to add it to your scene. Go to basic, player start. And we can leave it where it is for now. If you want, you can center it in your building. But I think this is good. Now, finally, we want to make our selection material. You can see when I click these guys, there's a nice orange highlight. And we're going to try to repeat the same thing with our post process material. So head over to your post process volume in the outliner. And then we're going to type in material. And then you'll see rendering features, post process materials pop up. You can hit the drop down, create a new item in the array, choose an asset reference. And then for the actual reference, we'll go into our ArcViz navigation template, materials folder, highlight folder, and click material instance selection highlight. Opening this material up, you can see we have here options for the line width as well as the fall off, uh, glow intensity, that kind of stuff. And we can also set the highlight color. So I can set something like, I don't know, a nice blue. And then hit save. And now if I press play, you can see I spawn near the top of this area. And we always spawn in the third person mode. And you can see we spawn at that player start location that we set earlier. And if I hover over any of these elements, you can see that they highlight blue. And clicking the elements selects them and it moves the camera over. So now your center is focused on that selected object. And you can use your right mouse button to pan and now you're centered on that object. And if we hit our first person mode, you can see the camera stops just shy of the object so we don't clip into it. And now because we've set those floor plate collisions, we can click to move. And while you're in here, left mouse button pivots you around, right allows you to strafe, forward, backward, left, right. And then zooming changes your camera's FOV. So you can zoom anywhere that your mouse is pointing in case you wanted to focus on, let's say a name tag like this. And you can always control the speed of the zoom as well, if it's too slow for you. Now we can also add camera lag. Now this isn't on by default, but I'll show you how to add it. Heading back to our main folder for the ArcViz nav template, we'll go into our character and we've set the basic movement. And if we open up the character basic, we can click our spring arm, type in leg, and set the camera rotation leg. And if we leave it at that default 10 value and press play, you can see that now we have a little bit more of a smooth movement. So there's a little bit of lag and that makes it a little bit easier on the eyes when you're moving around as things aren't as jerky. All right, you can see here now that we are in the hillside project. So all we need to do for this one, I'm gonna show you with the advanced navigation template is set it up. I've already added the collision channels, post process, everything that I showed you before, but I wanted to show you this one, show you an edge case that you might run into when setting this up on your own project. All right, now that we have it set up in the scene, you can see that immediately the advanced navigation doesn't lock you in to orbiting just what's in the center of your screen. You can click any part of the screen and it'll lock that orbit in no matter what your viewing angle is and orbit you accordingly. You can also zoom anywhere and in any direction and you're not locked to the center. And same thing with panning. Anywhere you click always stays under your cursor. Anywhere you click always stays under your cursor. Now, one edge case that I ran into when setting up this project was in first person mode. You can see I, fall, I fell right through the ground and now I'm in the water. Why is that? If we head back into the editor and click this floor level, we can see that it's saved in its own level instance. So with that level instance selected, I can press control B or right click to browse to that asset, which will take me to where it's located. Double click it to open it up and let's switch this to unlit mode so we can see what's happening. And if I turn on my collisions and look at the player collisions, you can see that nothing is blue. Blue means that things are collidable with the player and by default, it's not activated on a lot of instance meshes. So clicking one of these guys, let's say for example, I click static mesh nine and heading over to the static mesh in my details panel, I can browse to that asset. And if I double click this, It'll open up the static mesh. You can see it's this giant road. And if I type in collision, 
complexity. You can see by default, it's set to project default. If we set that to collision complex as simple, and we hit save, we can now see that it appears blue in our scene. This now means that our player can actually collide with it, which means they won't fall through the floor when trying to explore it in first person view, since, you know, gravity does apply to us. Now, you're probably imagining this is a lot to convert all one by one. So let me show you how to convert them all in one go. We still have our mesh open in our content browser. If I hit control A to select everything in our scene, I right click one of them, go to asset actions, edit selection in property matrix. And in our pin columns, I'll type in again, collision complexity. And then we're gonna select everything. And collision complexity is down here now. If we go where it says multiple values and set everything as complex collision as simple, we can see that it's batched all of them nicely for us. And then I can just press save to save all of those changes on 285 assets. And now there are a bunch more blue collidable objects. You can see it's clipping a little bit, but these are all objects that we can now step on. So if I head back to the main map and hit play, we can see that now if I click first person, I'm no longer falling through the floor. And I can also click to move around, travel up some stairs, look around, you know, zoom into someone's window, all the fun stuff. And the nice thing about this advanced game mode is it doesn't limit you to just being able to see, you know, your immediate site. You can also go out into the city. And if you have a, you know, fully developed context model that you want someone to explore or a city explorer, you can do something like that. And that's a wrap. Make sure to tune in next week for the new tutorial series where you can build your own navigation system from scratch through blueprints. Peace.